Do you like Christmas? Do you like picking out a Christmas tree? Hi kids, this is Auntie Myla and our story is, Are You Santa Claus? There's a verse in Isaiah 25 verse 4, it says, you are a tower of refuge to the needy in distress. That's God. He's a tower of refuge for us. Angela was 13 years old. She was sitting in school one afternoon, staring out at the window. She was looking at the big clock on the wall. Then she was looking down at her books the day was so long, it would never end. She wanted to go home so badly and she had to sit in school and listen to the teacher and try and pay attention. But her mind wasn't on her schoolwork. Her mind was on Christmas because on the way to school today on the bus, she saw them setting up Christmas trees that they had hauled in and setting them up in this big empty lot. You see, Angela lived in Texas, South Texas, way, way down at the bottom of Texas. And sometimes it would even be 80 degrees at Christmas, but that didn't matter. She could still have a Christmas spirit. Angela was the oldest in her family. And every year it was her job with her daddy to get a Christmas tree. And she thought, oh, they were setting up their Christmas trees. Oh. I want one so badly. Maybe Daddy and I could go today after school. Oh, when is school going to get over? She'd look at the clock. Oh, two more hours. How can she wait two hours? And she would try and do her schoolwork. And she oh, looked at the clock. Oh, and she would kept looking at, at the clock, kept look, trying to do her schoolwork. Well, finally, sc the school day did end teacher said, put your books away. Oh, good. Put my books away. And straighten up your desks. Oh, yeah, she was straightening her up desk. And then the teacher dismissed them. Oh, she was so happy. She ran out of the school, ran onto the school bus and waited for everyone else to get off. Then the school bus took off. And it was jogging down Yep, sure enough. Oh, there's people there buying trees. Oh, if we don't go today, I'm sure the prettiest ones will all be gone. And she kept looking. Oh, I hope Daddy's home. I hope he can take me. So finally, the bus stopped at her uh, stop. And she jumped up and said, thank you, and jumped off the steps and ran down to her house. It was a little ways away. She had to run as fast as she could. She ran out the house and she saw him off. She said, where's daddy? She knew daddy was home because his red truck was in the driveway. She thought, oh, I'm so glad daddy's home. Maybe we can go. And she ran to her daddy and says, daddy, they were, off, they were offloading Christmas trees when I was going to school and then on my way back I saw people, lots of people there buying trees. Can we please go buy a tree today? And Daddy got kind of a sad look on his face. Oh sweetie, he said, I'm really sorry. I don't think, think we can go today. He says, she said, we can't go today. He says, well, I'm supposed to um, help the city. Now every year the city puts together boxes for people that need boxes and presents for the kids that aren't going to get any presents. See, what happens is the different stores in town say, oh yeah, we can donate this and we'll donate that. And the grocery stores, oh yeah, we'll donate some food, oranges and apples and things for families that need it. And he said, I volunteer to help deliver boxes this afternoon. Oh. She was so upset. Daddy, really? He says, yes. And she walked off. Oh, she was so disappointed. She said, oh, I know we're not going to. 
get a pretty tree. There were so many cars there. Everyone's, everyone's going to buy the prettiest trees and we're just not going to get any. And she was so sad. She just went walking on. Then she heard her dad call her. Angela! What? I have an idea. Why don't you come with me? I don't want to. And dad said, well, I think you'd enjoy it. And she said, I don't want to. She was so disappointed because she wanted to buy a tree that afternoon. And here daddy has to go take these boxes to these families and he'll be gone for hours. And by that time, the Christmas tree place will be shut down. It'll be dark. Can't see trees anyway in the dark. And she, she says, no, I'm not going. And dad came over and says, Angela, I'd really like you to go with me. We could spend time together. And she looked at her daddy and she could see that he really wanted her to go. She said, okay, I'll go. But she didn't want to go. In her mind, she was thinking, I don't want to go. But she'll go to make her daddy happy. So they went and they got in the truck and they drove to the city hall. And when they got there, um, the secretary there said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. And there are some other people there. We have quite a few boxes to deliver. And she says, here are the boxes and the address is here and the name of the kids and uh, the toys that they're going to get. And she says, here are the boxes and here, you can take these boxes. And um, other people were there loading boxes up to deliver. And Angela just went, Okay, I guess I'll go along. But she didn't have a good attitude at all. She had a really bad attitude because she was so disappointed that they couldn't go and buy a tree today, a Christmas tree. That's the most fun day of the whole year is to find the perfect Christmas tree and then bring it home for her brothers and sisters and then they and then they decorate the tree and put cute Christmas music on and it's a really fun time. And here she had to go with her dad and deliver these boxes. So, got them all in. And then dad had the list, the addresses and the boxes and everything. And he passed the list to Angela. He says, okay, what's the first one on the list? She said, the Browns. And they live at, and she told the address. Dad said, okay. I think I know where that is. And so he was driving along, driving along. And he says, okay, I think it's right along here someplace. And they're looking at the numbers right here. Here it is. And they turned in. And dad said, Angela, do you want to come in with me? No. And he said, okay, that's okay. So he went and he got the box for the Browns and took it up to their door and rang the doorbell. Mrs. Brown came to the door. She said, oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. And so uh, dad left it there. Then he came out and he said, okay, what's the next address? And so she told him and they were looking for it, driving all over town. And they found, oh, here it is. And they stopped and took the box to that family. And then he took the box to the next family. And they kept going through. They had to drive all over town looking for the addresses and delivering the boxes for Christmas. And the kids were really happy. The last house they went to, he stopped and he looked, he said, uh, Angela, what was that number again? Yeah, yeah, uh, 224, yeah, this is it. So he pulled up and there was a little boy in the front yard and he picked up this big box and started taking it in. And the little boy ran to him the little boy was about four years old, ran to him and grabbed him around the, uh, a leg and hugged him and said, thank you so much for coming. Someone told me you were coming and bringing presents. I'm so happy that I'm gonna have presents this Christmas because usually he didn't get any presents. And he was just hanging on to Angela's dad. And Angela's dad thought he was so sweet. And he said, oh, you're so sweet. And then the little boy looked up and said, I know who you are. 
Angela's dad was so surprised if you know who I am? He says, uh-huh, you're Santa Claus. Aren't you? And Angela's dad thought, thought well, maybe. And you know what? Angela was looking out the window. She had rolled it down by this time. She was listening because she saw the little boy run up and grab her dad's leg and hug him. And then she heard him say, I know who you are. You're Santa Claus, aren't you? And she thought, oh, my dad is Santa Claus. And here I was so upset with him because he was taking presents to a little boy who wouldn't have presents if my daddy hadn't brought the box of presents to him. And she thought, oh, he's such a cute little boy. And so dad said, well, I'm gonna carry this box in the house. He carried it in and put it down. And the little boy's mom said, thank you so much. We really appreciate this. And the little boy said, thank you so much for coming. And the daddy said, oh, you're welcome. And he walked out and he got in the truck. And by this time, Angela's hard heart had melted. And she put her arm around her daddy. And she said, that was so nice of you to bring these boxes to these people. And daddy said, well, I'm glad you came with me. And as they drove home, Angela had a soft and sweet heart. She wasn't angry. She had forgotten about her Christmas tree because she saw a little boy that really was grateful and was so happy that he was going to have a Christmas. Yes. And so uh, Angela and her dad got a Christmas tree the next day. But Angela learned what is really important in life, and that is to help others. That's more important than helping yourself. Yes, it is. That's a sweet story. I want to pray. Dearest Father in heaven, thank you so much for looking down on us and smiling on us and, and loving us. Please, Lord, help us to think of others this Christmas, and not just ourselves, but others, because that's what you would want us to do. Bless all the little boys and the little girls this Christmas. We love you so much. For Jesus' sake, amen.